and it begins with the resurrection. The crucifixion is over for all of us. Everyone has been crucified with Christ on these garments called the cross. The day will come, I will start with the resurrection. You will rise within yourself, followed instantly by your birth from above. For no man can enter that state called the kingdom of God unless he is born from above. So he spent his day from morning to evening testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus. And then he used for his argument the law of Moses, reading scriptures for them, and then the prophets and the Psalms, trying to show these passages parallel his own experience. What passage would parallel his experience when it pleased God to reveal his son in me? And the preposition is in, it's not to me, as some translators give it. When it pleased God to reveal his son in me, that's where he's revealed, suddenly within you, the son appears. And the son is just as told you in scripture. The second psalm. And I will tell of the decree of the Lord. And he said unto me, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Whose words are these? These are the words of the psalmist, David. So when he reveals his son in you, which is called Messiah, it is David. Then you know who you are, because he is telling of the decree of the Lord. God said unto David, Thou art my son. Well, if David now stands before you and calls you, Father, who are you? Are you not God? Are you not the Lord? Well, I prophesy for you, you will have it. You will have that experience where David stands before you and calls you Father. And then, and then only you will know that you are the Lord God. All these things are going to happen in every child born of woman. When? How do I know when? Let me share with you an experience I do not think the lady is here tonight. She's been coming here recently and she wrote me a letter. And she said, I did not understand your book. They were given to me by a lady who recently brought me with her to your meeting. I've only been coming to your meeting recently. And I will come, I think, until the end. But well, they are not here tonight. But... I will tell her story. He said, night before last, and her letter is dated the 11th of June. So this is the 9th of June. He said, in my dream, I found myself standing on the corner waiting for a streetcar or a bus. And they came by, and the crowds got on, and I let everyone go by. I wondered to myself, if across the way, coming from the apartment house, someone is seen standing here, they will wonder what's wrong with that woman. She could have boarded one of these buses to take us to her destination. And here I am waiting. Then a woman came to me and said to me, the train you're waiting for will be here in a minute. It's a black train, a long, flat black train, with seats on both sides, facing the street. I looked up and here is a long black train coming. Seats on both sides facing the street. I boarded it. Up front, I saw a crowd around the coffin. The coffin was covered and they were weeping. And my attention was drawn to the coffin. Then it was diverted because I looked to the street and here was a young woman, dead, very dead. So the right arm was eaten away up to the shoulder. And she was day and really very day, as she said. Then I noticed the feet began to move, and this woman began to be, I would say, restored to life, this young woman. Then my attention was turned now to the coffin, and out of the coffin rises a man clothed in white. At that moment I woke. I remained awake long enough to record it and to impress my mind with the dream. Fell back to sleep, and here I am among a huge crowd. 
And we're all going to hear Neville. But there's a feeling in the atmosphere that Neville is about to die. And we hasten our pace because we want to be with him. He's about to die. So Neville puts a robe upon him and he lays down in a ditch. And then he crawls through a small tunnel. But it seems so easy for him to do it. He crawls through the tunnel which led into a cave. And when he entered the cave, he stretched himself out in the cave. And all of us are struggling to follow the same pattern. So we too crawled through this tube, and it was a very great struggle on our part. Not as easy as you made it. It seemed so effortless when you did it. Then you rose from the cave as though you had to change your mind and came back out the same way with the same effortlessness. And you came out, we made the same effort. Again, I wondered, whoever made this shoe, why could not have made it easier? And so we all came out. But not everyone could make it. Many of us did, but not all could make it. I will tell you, all will make it. But all are not ready to make it. That was an adumbration. That was a foreshadowing of what is in store for everyone in this world. This is the mystery of life through death. Unless a seed or the grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it remains alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much. 